Today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the observer pattern. And I think perhaps the best way to begin talking about the observer pattern is to look at a problem uh, that the observer pattern might actually help us solve. And in order to do that, I created a, a simple little application that I'm going to demonstrate uh, and then describe uh, the issues that we have with that problem. All right, so let me run the application and let me get things sort of arranged so they're easy to see. Um, the application itself is a simple newsfeed application. And I've got a main window that allows me to open up different views of a news feed. Uh, one's a ticker and one's a, a running list of all of the news items that I post. And the form itself also allows me to post news items. So as I open these things up and bring them into view, we can see that we would probably end up with a couple of different views of news. Okay, News is pretty simple. It's got a date and some text that goes along with it. Now, the idea is, is that when I enter information into this uh, Feedmaster 5000 window, uh, it's going to post in my news list and my ticker at the same time. So let's try this. I'm going to post some really good news and post it. And luckily, I coded the application so that it actually works. All right, I can post another one, and in real time, some really, really good news also shows up. Okay, and I'm kind of proud of the application. It works. It does what I want it to do. I did some really cool ticker work here, uh, but it does have some, some issues currently. Uh, for instance, what if I wanted to have multiple tickers and, and drag them around on the screen to different places? Uh, the second ticker opens up, and I can post another story here. So here's another story. Let me post it. And no problem. It shows up down here in my news list. It shows up here in my new ticker. But as I run through my old ticker, my new story isn't there. And all my old stories actually aren't in that new ticker. Um, and the, the design of the application is actually the reason why that is, this has occurred. And there's probably some solutions to it that would work, but I think the best solution is to implement the observer pattern. Uh, but prior to actually doing that, let's take a look at the design and look at what I did wrong in the way that I designed this application. So let's start looking at our class diagram here. And I've got a news feed class which is kind of the crux of the application. The idea here is that I would have a, a, a news story that I want to add. I would call the add story method and pass into it a news story object. The news story object is about as simple as it gets. It's got two properties, a date and the text uh, that goes with the story, uh, and a constructor that's down here that allows me to easily create one of these by passing in a date and the text. Once add story is called, it adds the actual new story to a private list of stories, of new stories. Uh, I've got an additional method on here for getting stories that I'm currently not even using, but it returns an I enumerable, or actually an I queryable, of new stories. In my ideal world, I think I would have the news feed handle basically all the tasks related to adding a story and publishing that story out for different views to consume. And right now, I've got two different views, and those views aren't really set up for consumption. Really, they're set up to be notified of a new story, uh, but they don't listen for that type of event. They have to be told, and the only method I currently have of telling these forms that there's a new story is by actively calling a method on um, an instance of those forms. So let's look at the code behind that and see what's going on here. So I've got in my form class, I've got three private variables that I'm tracking. I've got a news feed, I've got a ticker form, and I've got a list form. And the news feed pretty much needs to be there. Uh, this is the, the main variable that I'm going to be using for adding news items. And these are here because, well, this form creates them, and I need to be able to access these in order to add news stories. I need to be able to access an instance of the form in order to call its add news story method uh, directly. Okay? Now, 
again, in an ideal world, what I would actually have happen is I would come down here in my button uh, post event, okay, and I would just add a new story to the feed. And the feed would in turn perhaps turn around and call the ticker form and turn around and call the list form and tell those forms to add a new story to their view. Now, the big problem there is that if I do that, my feed, my news feed, which is a nice background implementation class, would all of a sudden need to know about Windows Forms types of stuff. It would need to keep track of a ticker form and a list form. And furthermore, if I had more than one ticker or more than one list form, uh, I would need to be able to pass those into my feed and have it keep track of all the forms that were currently being displayed and call their add new story methods. And I guess there's a few ways I can get around that. And if I'm if I'm being really kludgy, maybe uh, you know I would allow that to happen, but it's certainly not ideal. The problem that I had with the multiple forms, multiple ticker forms showing up, uh, is actually pretty obvious to see as well. As soon as I click the ticker button, I set this ticker form variable to a new instance of the ticker form, and it shows up and it does its thing. It's it's being displayed on the screen and I can actually have multiple ticker forms but the old ticker form variable is lost when I assign it to the new ticker form here. So I've really only got one ticker form instance being tracked by my global ticker form variable and so when I call add new story I'm only actually adding the new story to my new ticker form. As soon as I create a new ticker form here, the second ticker form, this variable uh, holds a reference to that new form. So my old form is lost and of course I could get around that by conceivably creating a list of ticker forms and adding uh, the new instance or a reference to each new instance to the ticker form list and looping through the list to add new stories. It really starts to get convoluted. It starts to get really ugly and difficult to maintain. And speaking of difficult to maintain, perhaps even more difficult uh, is the fact that if I start adding new types of forms to the application, uh, I have to come back into this form, I have to edit my post to take into account different kinds of forms, each one probably has a different list tracking it, and it just gets really convoluted. And perhaps even worse, the only reason this works at all is because I am actively clicking a button on this form, which also happens to be the same form that I clicked buttons on to open these additional view forms. So this form knows about the, the different ways of viewing this feed. And that's not usually going to be the case. If I've got a news feed, most of the time the news is going to come maybe from the internet. Okay, I'm downloading the, you know, the, an RSS feed from the internet and this form's not going to have any idea when that occurs. It's the news feed itself that's going to be perhaps on a timer of some sort going out and downloading those and it needs to tell me when it's received new uh, news stories. And again, there's a, another, another way to solve that. I could conceivably put in some form of polling mechanism uh, into these forms so that they actually polled and found when I had new feed items by querying the get stories method uh, and then on a regular basis, maybe once every minute, I could update those forms with new feeds. But again, it's, it's very inelegant um, and it kind of wastes resources. If there's no new messages, those extra polling calls um, are lost. So in this particular case, some sort of a publish subscribe mechanism where I can say, hey, here I am, I'm a news feed and I consume news stories. And as I consume those news stories, I can let you know if you care about the fact that I've received a news story. And if you'd like to subscribe to the fact that I'm publishing these news stories to you, that's great. And I'll give those to you, and you can do with them what you'd like. It's a very elegant solution. It's a very common solution. So that's the crux of the observer pattern. I've got a class that is able to publish a notification of something, some event, something that a consumer is going to be interested in receiving. In this case, the publisher, the class that is going to tell me about things, is going to be the newsfeed class. 
And the consumers, the ones that care about the fact that this news feed is getting a new story, um, are going to be the two forms, the new list form, the news list form, and the news ticker form. In the next video, we'll be looking at one way of implementing that, uh, basically a direct clone of the, the classic observer pattern. And in the next video, we'll be looking at the way C Sharp has implemented the observer pattern, at least natively, which is a, a concept called delegates and events.